Thanks for tuning into Heavy, where we bring you the latest interviews with local, national, and international artists. Today's victim is. Hey, it's Carl here from Ocean Sleeper. We've just dropped our new EP, Is It Better Feeling Nothing? Um, super heavy EP for us, and we're stoked for all you guys to hear it. Beautiful. Carl, thanks for joining us this afternoon, mate. Man, stoked, stoked to be here with you. Sure. As you mentioned, Ocean Sleeper released your latest EP, Is It Better Feeling Nothing, last Friday, mate. So. How's the early response been to it? Oh, it's been awesome, man. Um, I think a lot of the songs is a bit of a shock factor from what people are used to, uh, used to us having. So, yeah, it's been really interesting seeing everyone a bit shocked and surprised and stoked with how it's all sort of the direction of it all. So you, you say shock, mate. Like, what, what, what is that shock factor? Um, I suppose for the most part, Ocean Sleeper is like the, the easy listening metal, sort of that heavy band that isn't that heavy. And with this one, we sort of, went all into being heavy and uh, the first song especially we wanted to make sure from the get-go everyone sort of knew that was how it was going to be so first song uh, just yeah straight into like a much heavier kind of way that we've ever done mm-hmm. and the press release says it that the EP sees the band at their most pensive yet would you agree with that statement uh pensive yeah pensive yeah. aggression don't really go too well together <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no nah, um, I think so like you know, while we were writing it all, it was definitely an interesting time for sort of everyone. Just like it was, it's a pandemic release. Like we wrote it all um, when we were apart from each other for the first time ever. We wrote it all on video calls and all that kind of thing. Um, uh, and then, you know, being away from mates, all that kind of thing, it sort of sucks. So I guess it just adds to the end result of it all, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting, mate, that there's no question mark after the title. Is it better feeling nothing? So is, is it more of a statement or is it a question? And, and was that deliberate? Um, I guess it's just a statement where you're just kind of like, oh, fuck it. Is this just better doing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, overall, would you, would you say the album is an album of hope or despair? Uh, oh, that's a good one. Well, I suppose a lot of our kind of thing that I like to try and capture lyrically is sort of, not like I guess hope is a good thing but a lot of the time I like to touch base on just like things suck and that's just how it's going to be it doesn't have to have hope it's just kind of like it's okay for things to suck and it's a good thing to express that I suppose mm. yeah yeah because yeah yeah it can't always be all you know happy endings I suppose oh life is like that is it brother <laughs> <laughs> that's it mate that's just it <laughs> So you released the singles Forever Sinking and Your Love I'll Never Need. So just say if someone, if that's all someone's heard of the EP, would you say they're a good sonic representation? Oh, absolutely. Um, so Forever Sinking was the first song we wrote for it. Um, and it it really captured the, our, I guess, new way of writing music. Um, Ioni has gone really well into his productions, like gone straight in for like heaps of, just heaps of tracks of things like electronic guitar riffs, uh, big synthesizer, like epic moments and things like that. Um, and that song really captured all of those things. It really captured like, uh, really captured all those big moments. The heaviness uh, with my vocals, I definitely went a lot heavier than we uh, previously have done. And that was really, really fun to do. Um, we just sort of, I don't know, just wanted to go in a way that was just no way stale, just something really interesting for us and really fun for us. Um, and yeah. Yeah, cool. And like loosely described, mate, like your music combines massive slabs and metal with catchy as fuck sing along choruses. So well, yeah. where, where did that come from? Uh, I don't know. Like we've just, from the, from the start, we always just sort of like wanted to be that heavy band that you didn't necessarily have to, you know, be a big heavy music fan to like. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that kind of transition band and it's like, you know, our music might trans- transition people to like actual heavy bands because we're sort of, we're not really, I don't, know, I don't really look at us as a heavy band. We have heavy parts and we have all that kind of stuff, but we're just sort of like, a, I don't know, something that more like a, a general kind of person will hear and be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, and sort of like your yeah, Ivory Bales or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how difficult is it finding the balance, mate, between that heaviness and the harmonics? It's never been a problem, to be honest. Like, we've always just have had our writing style the way that we've gone about, you know, putting songs together, putting bits together. And it's never in my mind been an issue or we've never sat down and be like, Oh, this, this or that. It's just sort of 
organically happened that way. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And you're about to head off on tour, mate, starting in Sydney on August the 26th before going through Brisbane, Newcastle, Canberra and Adelaide and finishing in Melbourne on September 3rd, mate. So tell us a bit about the tour and what people can expect from you. Um, all right. So the tour, we're, we're pumped. Um, we've got a bunch of legends on the tour. We've got us with bringing Thousand Below from America over for the first time. We're uh, bringing Earthcaller from Melbourne, bringing Inertia from Sydney. Um, a lot of the, the local supports are fucking awesome as well um we're really really happy to be able to not only bring over thousand below but like in general bring it over an international band is a goal we've had for a long time and we wanted to like through covid we want when it you know live music started again we wanted that to be what our kind of first headliners would be and yeah really stoked that that could all work out and i understand tickets are selling pretty fast bro so where can people get on top of it and grab one before they miss out Uh, um, we've got on our socials, all the ticket links are all there and all that, um, in our bio on Instagram, on Facebook and the event, uh, Facebook events, all that, or on our website at oceansleeper.com. Um, but yeah, we're, we're pumped. We've got, you know, we've put a lot of effort into a lighting package, something that we haven't done before. Um, yeah, like if you haven't been to an ocean sleeper show before they're you know, they're a bit crazy. Everyone gets absolutely crazy at them. So yeah, keen, really keen for it. Keen to hear those sing-alongs. Keen to hear those breakdown call-outs. Like, it's just going to be an absolute time. Like, it it was just shit not being able to do it over lockdown. And now we've not had, bad. you know, we had we had a taste of it at the start of the year doing doing some club runs. But like now we get to do our own proper headliner. And yeah, it's going to be fucking awesome. Fuck yeah! All right, Carl. Well, thanks very much for your time today, mate. The call tour kicks off August the twenty sixth. So get along to a show, mate. And yeah, if if I finish in time tomorrow night, I might try and hunt you down. <laughs> oh bro absolutely give us a message man we'll sort that out for sure beautiful mate good to talk to you carl catch up soon mate good luck thanks mate bye see you bro me
I've been feeling low.